So I have a project and this is actually a really easy one, but it's a fun one. And it's actually a project that I have done previously in another life with another company, but I haven't done it here um, with you guys. At least I can't remember that I've done it here with you guys. It's been a while. Um, if we have, and that's a, a really easy bangle bracelet, which I know we've done bangle bracelets before, but this is one where we're going to wrap it with sorry silk. And if you guys will remember when I worked for Jesse James beads, we did some bangles and we wrapped those with fairy silk. Well, fairy silk is very similar to sorry ribbon. And so depending on what you've got in your own stash is really going it, to, it's not going to make a difference one way or another. In fact, not only can you do this with sari ribbon or um, fairy silk, you can do this with scraps of fabric. You can do this with denim. It looks really cool with denim. It's one of my favorites, actually. Um, you can also do this with just regular ribbon. Um, fabric scraps is probably my favorite. I know you guys have heard me talk about fabric scraps previously um, because I like to go to like the craft stores and go to where the remnants are and you can usually get like bags of remnants for really really cheap it's always a steal and it never fails there are some really cool pieces of fabric that you can turn into jewelry I love fiber jewelry of all kinds so making a bangle bracelet with like a really easy base or if you want to buy a prefab base you can do that um, as well and it makes it even simpler but I'm going to show you how to put together a bangle bracelet. We're gonna use some 16 gauge wire. We're gonna use some artistic wire crimp connectors um, and the, where are those fabulous pliers? The bracelet bending pliers, you guys, if you don't have these in your life, put these on your wish list. I wish I had some of them in my shop so that I could sell them to you because they're just so darn cool. There's a lot of things you can do with these. So we're gonna talk about that as we, um, as we get going. As far as the beads, we are using the Bargain Bead Box beads. And this actually was supposed to be the month of May shipment, right? But they had some trouble. So none of us got our May shipment until June. So now they're calling this the June Bargain Bead Box. And the theme for this is so beautiful and so timely for this time of year. It's red, white, and blue. And it's nautical themed. It's what did they say? What are they calling it? Navigator? I can't remember exactly what it is that they're calling it, but it's not just, um, you know, red, white, and blue in the, um, in the sense of like being patriotic necessarily, um, but more in like the kind of nautical, you know, um, sailors, if you will. I could, I could go for a sailor. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Ah. Uh. So I'm going to show you some of the beads that were included. We're not going to go through the entire box, but I will show you kind of what you're missing if you're not doing bargain bead box, because I love bargain bead box. I know a lot of you out there have it. Um, also, um, let's see, what else? I can't remember. I'm sorry. It's just <laughs> doing my best, you guys. I'm doing my best. Okay, so... Oh, I know what it was. I have a, um, I've got a code, don't I, Joan? I've got a code for Bargain Bead Box. I always forget this part. I've got a code if you want to use it to sign up for Bargain Bead Box if you're not already subscribed and they give me credit. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, but it is always appreciated. So what ends up happening when they give me credit for your purchase is they actually end up sending me mine at a deep discount or even free, depending on how many of you have used the code. That makes it easier for me to show it to you guys right so you guys essentially are helping me pay for the beads to do a project with them does that make sense I don't want you to think that like I'm just getting like all this money in my pocket I totally wish I was but I'm not <laughs> we just have a relationship where they send me the beads and I get to show you a really cool project with them and hopefully entice you to buy them so that's how that's how that goes um, Phyllis says she had two sailor sons. We are a Navy family on my mom's side of the family. We're a Navy family. So I, I've got a soft spot for all sailors. Indeed. I'm not a water person, but now, you know, a man in uniform on a boat, I'm not going to say no to that. <laughs> okay. Um, did you get credit? Do you get credit for the first time or every month? I, it's only for the first month. So it's only for new signups. As far as I know, I'm pretty sure that that's the way that it works. Um, you know, that's a good question. Maybe I should ask them that. Hmm. Whew. All right. Look, we made it through the first, <laughs> made it through the first five minutes and I didn't have a complete meltdown. 
Hooray! Victory! Let's get down to business, shall we? And keep this positivity going. Okay, so to make a bangle bracelet, guys, it could not be easier. Well, it actually could be easier. You could just buy a pre-made bangle and cover it yourself. But if you don't, <laughs> thank you, Colleen. <laughs> If you don't have the option to buy one and you've got plenty of wire in your stash, I'm going to show you. This is the core. This one, I pulled the ribbon off of it. It still has some little ribbon scraps attached to it. But the core of this is 16 gauge wire and I'm using a crimp connector, which is a large crimp that is specifically designed to crimp just like bead string wire, but this large um, thicker artistic wire and it creates a cold connection. So what is a cold connection? A cold connection is just when you do not need to solder or, you know, use fire. <laughs> One of those things that I'm not allowed to play with. Um, and you can make your own cold connections. So this is not just for bangle bracelets. Anywhere you need to connect two pieces of wire, you can use a crimp connector as long as you buy the one that is um, the right size. So let me show you what these look like in the package so that you can see, okay? So they are made by Beetalon. So they are artistic wire, large wire crimp connectors. And this is actually a pack that has, I believe this is a variety pack that has more than one size in it. Nope, it's not. This is 14 gauge. So that's what you need to know when you go to purchase these. You need to purchase them in the same size as the wire that you're using. So the wire that I'm using is 16 gauge. So obviously the 14 gauge crimps are going to be way too big for that. But I just want to show you what it looks like in the packaging. And you'll be able to turn it over on the back. It will tell you use with 14 gauge wire. So I know for sure what gauge I need to use or which one to buy. This one says use with 16 gauge wire. So this will be the right size. However, it's not the right color. So they do come in a couple of different colors. You can get them in silver, you can get them in brass, and you can get them in copper as well. So they're really, really handy to have and super easy to use. So if you've not ever used any of these to make cold connections with your artistic wires, I highly, highly recommend trying them out. It is definitely a game changer. So like I said, for my wire, since I'm using 16 gauge wire, I'm going to need a 16 gauge crimp connector for our wire. Now, as far as the tool that you are going to need for this, there are two different things you can use. So if you want and you have, you can use your regular crimping pliers. I know that seems really strange, but you absolutely can. You can use your, um, your regular crimps for the smaller ones, your Mighty Crimps for the larger ones, but did you know that Beetalon actually makes a pair of crimping pliers that is specifically designed just for these crimps? And you can see the reason is because it only has that, that notch for the tooth, right? Because that's the only part that we're concerned with is just that little part that comes down to, to actually crimp. And that's what holds your wire together, right? That's what holds the crimp on there. So you don't have to have that little round or oval part of the tool um, to tidy up your crimp like we do with your bead string wire, okay? So I'm gonna show you, don't worry, I'm gonna show you all how to get all the way through all this. It's not as hard as it might seem. And if you've got regular crimpers, you're gonna be good to go. Don't feel like you need to go out and just buy those specifically unless you plan on making a ton of jewelry with them with the crimp connectors. Okay, so uh, Ruth says, can you use the Ohm Tara crimping pliers? I don't believe that you can. I don't think that you can. I'm not sure. I don't have any of her pliers, so I'm not entirely sure what the jaw on those looks like, but I don't, I don't think you can. I don't know. That's a good question. Okay, so as far as the wire, I'm using some 16 gauge artistic wire and I've cut myself about eight and a half inches. That's gonna give me a, a bracelet that is about this size, which is a little big for me, but probably gonna be fine for most everybody else. I have little tiny hands, a little tiny wrists. Um, oh, Joan says, yes, you can use the Ohm Tara crimping pliers on these. Cool, that's cool. Thank you, Joan. Fantastic, I love that. So yeah, no extra tools are needed, guys. 
Okay, so 16 gauge artistic wire. However, you can use whichever of the larger gauge wires that you want to create your, your bangle bracelet. So if you've got, if you don't have 16, but maybe you have 14 or you have 12 or something like that, then you can definitely use one of those instead, okay? Now, before we do the crimping part, all we have here is a straight piece of wire, right? We need it to be in this really cool round bangle shape. So what we're gonna use is the bracelet bending pliers. Now, what makes the bracelet bending pliers super cool is the jaw that is on those. So you can see it's nylon in the, in the middle here, right? But it has that really cool curve. Sorry, I'm having to sit you at kind of a strange angle here to see this so that there's enough room. But you can see the jaw on that has a great curve. That's gonna help to create our bangle bracelet shape or you can use it like to sing songs if you, I'm like seeing a little face here. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> or you can use this to, um, to make curves and components. Now, why would you ever want to do that? Well, if you've got some filigree pieces or if you've got other things that maybe you want to use for a bracelet. I'm trying to think if I've got something right here that I could use real quick to show you. Let's see. I bet I do. I bet I do. So any kind of... Any kind of metal piece that you've got, if you want to give it a nice curve, let's see, let's find a better piece than what I have here. Let's just use this for an example, okay? So, you know how when you put things, you put big pieces in particular on a bracelet, or if you've got just like a big rect rectangle that you're going to stamp onto, uh, but you want it to be curved so that it fits comfortably on your wrist, you can use these to create that really cool curve shape as well. See how I just gave it just a slight curve. That's a, that's just enough so that it is gonna sit comfortably on your wrist, right? <laughs> Catherine says, I love that you're so funny. I'm, I'm seriously a dork, Catherine. <laughs> I am a huge nerd, but it's okay, it's all good. Um, so you can use these and they're kind of mighty, right? They're mighty. So you can bite down on some pretty hefty pieces of metal to create your curved components and it doesn't take a whole lot, right? And that is just, that makes a huge difference. I know it's just a tiny slight adjustment, but it does really make a, um, a huge a huge difference in your piece of jewelry. Not only that, but if you just needed like a small curve, right? Let's say you needed a component that was only, let's pretend like it's only this long, right? It's perfect to make that perfect little curve where it's gonna be nice and even. You can roll the ends, make loops on the ends, and now you have a curved component to use in your jewelry making however you want to. So these are handy to have for sure, they don't have a spring on them, so you're really kind of up to your own strength to use them, which is fine with me. It doesn't bother me at all that they don't have a spring. In fact, I'm kind of partial to the fact that they don't because I have a tendency to pop the springs on spring-loaded tools. Um, okay, so I've gone through that enough. Let's, let's create our bangle bracelet shape, okay? So what we do to get started is we take our, our straight piece of wire here, and we're just going to put that in between I'm gonna have to raise you up just a little bit more here. You're gonna put that in between the mouth of your pliers and you're just going to bite down on it and you're gonna do small sections at a time, right? So just moving the tool along the wire, just tiny little bits at a time. I'm not making big, huge jumps. I wanna be sure that every single part of that wire is, gonna, is going to come in contact with the jaws of these pliers, okay? So just going around the entire wire and we have created our circular shape. Now you're looking at it and you're going, okay, that's great, but that's tiny. That's not going to fit on anybody's hand. That's okay. We're going to just open it up, right? We're going to open it back up nice and wide. We're going to attach our crimp connector to it. And then we're going to put it back into the pliers again, because once we get the crimp on, it kind of distorts the, that nice round shape. So we need to, um, we need to, to keep these nearby. So let's talk about the crimp connector itself, which is just a metal tube, right? There's nothing 
there's nothing fancy about this, but it is a super cool little gadget to have, that's for sure. So for mine, I like to go ahead and place mine into the pliers so that it's already ready to go. I don't have to worry about it. I can just hold it, just don't squeeze it yet. Now, what we want is we want the two ends of the wires to meet in the middle, right? So I want this side of the wire to take up only half and this side of the wire to only take up half. So to do that, there's no real way to measure. What I like to do is I'll take it, since I'm holding it in the tool, I'll take it and I'll bring it up next to the wire and kind of measure and mark it with my thumb. Okay, that looks like that's gonna take up about half, right? So hold your thumb right there so that you don't go past it with the tube. Go ahead and put the, the crimp on push it up to your thumb and then we're going to squeeze and you want to really squeeze i'm talking like i'm using both hands to squeeze okay you want to squeeze really really tightly and then let go what happens is it does kind of flatten the top side the inside it actually bites all the way through the crimp and you can see the bracelet on the inside do you see that you can actually see that wire on the inside that's how you know you've got it on there nice and tight and to double check you give it the tug test pull on it and make sure that you have a really secure crimp on it now we're going to take the other end and we're going to place it in the other side and it should take up half of the inside of that crimp okay then we're going to take our pliers or our crimper tool again and we're gonna place that right in there, make sure that you've got a good connection, and then you wanna squeeze. And again, I'm squeezing with both hands really tight, okay? And then give it the tug test and look at it from the inside and you can see. So now we have these two little bite marks on the inside, nobody's ever gonna see them. So you can leave your bangle just like this. This is a great way to just make a bangle and hang whatever you want to from it. If you just want a wire bangle, that's fine. But we're gonna cover ours up. But before we do that, you can see how our circle has kind of turned into more of an oval. So we're going to go back over the entire thing with our bracelet bending pliers again. And I'm actually going to start at the crimp. So I'm going to put that crimp into the bracelet bending pliers and give it a squeeze. I'm going to make my way all the way back around the bracelet just to give it its shape back. Okay, and now it's back to that perfect round shape. Cool, right? Super, super easy to do. There is no soldering involved. I don't have to heat up a tool and burn myself or anything. Super easy to do. And if you're going to make a lot of bra bangle bracelets, I definitely, definitely recommend getting the crimp connectors and the bracelet bending pliers. They're, they're worth having for so many reasons, but bangle bracelets make really good gifts and they also make really good bases for things like what we're gonna do today. So I'm going to do, 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 lower you down, brighten things back up a little bit. It's weird how that works. And now I'm going to use a piece of my sari ribbon. Now, as far as my sari ribbon is concerned, mine, everybody seems to ask this question when I use sari for things. And I haven't used it here recently, but over on um, when I was doing lives on Jewel Loom, we did use some sari ribbons a little bit. And my sari ribbons have the frayed edge, right? They haven't been sewn on the edges. And I like the raw fringe edge. That's just me. If you do not like the raw fringe edge, I definitely recommend coming through and just trimming it all up with your scissors ahead of time. Once you get it wrapped, then you can even trim off even more of it. Um, but once you get it wrapped, it won't fray anymore. So um, don't feel like you need to like sew the edges of this because you absolutely don't, okay? All right, and as far as the length is concerned, I've got, let me measure here, let's see, one, two, I've got about, I've got about three feet of the ribbon. It's not quite as much. I like to work with about four feet of the ribbon, but you don't, sometimes you don't get to be choosy when it comes to your scraps, right? So if you don't have a long enough piece, use more than one piece. Um, Stephanie says, how do you measure the wire to make sure it will fit your wrist? I don't know. <laughs> 
being completely honest with you, I really don't know. When it comes to bangle bracelets, honestly, Stephanie, you, it's really kind of trial and error. Um, I know that eight and a half inches of 16 gauge wire will give you a bangle bracelet that is pretty universal in size for um, people who can wear about a seven and a half inch bracelet. So that's a good starting point. Um, but I, I don't know for sure. It really is just kind of trial and error. I don't even know that there's a formula. I'll be honest with you, but I can ask, I can, I can ask that to Wyatt or Meredith and they can definitely let me know and I can let you know <laughs> for sure. Okay. So to get started, there's a couple of things you can do to, to, to secure your ribbon. You can just hold it with your fingers um, I'm going to use this a little tiny piece of 24 gauge wire here, just a little scrap. So just a couple of inches. Um, and I'm going to take my sari ribbon and I'm going to kind of lay it and fold it over on that crimp. And I'm holding it together with my thumb. And I'm going to lay my little piece of 24 gauge wire across there. And I'm just going to wire wrap a couple of times, like just a couple. You don't have to start this way if you don't want to. Um, but I find that this is the easiest for me. So that I don't hold, have to hold everything the entire time. Now, you can either leave this and trim off your ends and cover it up with ribbon. Or you can leave it just like it is, wrap around once. And when you get all the way around, undo this and just wrap over. I'm actually going to wrap over mine with the silk. So I'm going to trim off the ends. I'm just going to leave this in there. You'll never even know it's there. Okay. So now I don't have to worry about holding everything together as I wrap. Now, as far as the ribbon is concerned, you're just going to wrap it around the outside of the bangle. And I want to cover the bangle with wide pieces of this. Now, you don't have to do it that way. I like mine to be in wide sections. If you want to wrap yours in tight little um, sections, you know, where your, your, your sari ribbon is twisted, you know what I'm saying? You can do it that way. It's really up to you. You're going to get two totally different looks depending on how you lay your ribbon across the surface of your bangle. Okay. And it does take a minute, so just be patient. It's not, it's not super instant. But the good news is, is that it's not hard, right? It's not hard to wrap ribbon. It's just, just a, 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 a matter of patience. Kind of turning as you go. I love this blue. Okay, so we're making our way around. Making sure that I don't have any of the metal showing. You can see I'm, I'm making sure that the ribbon is completely covering up the bangle. Okay, we're almost back over to where we started. And when we get to that point, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to cover up the little wire piece that's holding everything on. And then I'm going to go back over all of this a second time. The more times around you go, obviously, the thicker your bracelet is going to be. If you don't want it to be thick, then you can stop. Or you can go several times around and make it nice and thick. And it also makes it, um, it, it makes it kind of cushiony. <laughs> Obviously, you know, you start wrapping your fabrics around, it'll, it'll create a little bit of a cushion as well. So play around with it and see what you like the best. All right, so I'm going to keep going so you can see where 
where we started here, I just wanna be sure that I get that covered up. So you can see I just covered that right up with my ribbon and I'm just gonna keep going. Is Sam here? Hi, Sam. Everybody's saying hi, Sam. I missed it. I wasn't paying attention. Hi, Sam. You guys, Sam and I have fun things coming up for you guys. Cannot wait. Okay, so I'm just going back around. We do make a good team. Sam and I make a great team. <laughs> Sam, I will wrap you up in blue any day, my friend. Especially this color. Are you not in love with this, this like, it's this, this royal, lovely blue. I'm feeling the blues. <laughs> so many levels I'm feeling the blues but I'm I'm really into blue this this time of year for some reason and I guess it's because I'm it's that nautical nautical summertime thing I guess I don't know I'm feeling it I don't shy away from you know bold colors in the summertime I feel like Sometimes you can get in that habit, you know, in the springtime you get into the pastels and everything is so soft and then you kind of just kind of ride that wave through the summer, but I'm not a, I'm not much of a pastels person. So when spring is over, I'm ready to rock the bolts. So these deep, deep blues and dark reds, I'm all about that for summertime. All right, so I'm just going to use up. The rest of my ribbon I've been around twice now I can tell because I can feel the crimp in there and I want to just keep going it's not gonna hurt anything to use up what's left of my ribbon even if I can't make it all the way around a, a third time that's okay uh, we're gonna use some of the wire to go around all of this and squeeze it all together so there won't there won't really be any parts where it looks to be too much thicker is what I'm saying. You know, my long-winded way of saying things. I do have these, <laughs> these strings that are going to have to be trimmed off. All right, almost done, almost done. See if I can go a little faster here so we can move on to the next step because the next step's the fun part. Not that this isn't fun, it's just a little time consuming. All right. Okay, so I'm right at the end of my ribbon. Now, if you had wanted to leave your um, your ribbon end in the beginning loose, you could have just taken your 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 beginning and your end of your ribbon and tied those together in a knot and had some really cool, um, you know, fringe. I feel like the beads need to be kind of the star of this one. So I didn't do it that way. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to wrap this around with some wire, but I need to get rid of this stuff here. Now, don't let go. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't let go. The whole thing will come undone and you'll have to start completely over again and you will use your sentence enhancers. So hold on, okay? And in the meantime, go ahead and take your wire. Now I'm working directly from the spool. I will cut some of this off in just a minute, but I just want to go ahead and, and get started so that I can let go. But you want to take your wire. Let's see what's going to be the best way. I'm so afraid I'm going to let go of this and it's going to go spinning. So hold it on there and just take your wire and wrap around a few times and that's going to secure your end. Now we're going to go around it some more, but here in the beginning, we just need to be sure that, that we can actually let go without things spinning out of control. Okay, so there we go. Now, 
I'm still attached to the spool here, so I'm going to pull out a bit. I like to work with about 24 inches at a time of the 24 gauge wire. That's what we're gonna wrap with. Um, but you can do more or less. You can do it in shorter sections if you want to. Totally up to you, okay? So now I'm going to wrap around one more time, kind of close here, just for good measure. Now I'm gonna go around the entire bangle with the 24 gauge wire. And we're gonna do this like the stripes on a candy cane, okay? So I don't want it to be tight wraps like here. I want these wraps to be big open wraps where there are big spaces in between them, okay? So we're gonna go all the way around. And it's okay if your wire kind of disappears in the ribbon because we've got plenty of wire. No worries there, you're gonna be able to see the wire. Okay, so just going around. Oops. Okay. Uh oh, <laughs> making a mess with my wire. It's kind of going crazy here. All right. So I'm almost all the way around. Now, if your wire is long enough to go around a second time, that's fine. If it is not, cut yourself another piece and we're gonna go the other direction. I'm actually gonna trim mine off and start with another piece and save my scrap here for something else. So I'm up here to where we started. Okay, I've gone all the way around. I'm gonna wrap it around a couple of times just to secure it. Yes, I realize there are more wraps here than anywhere else, but there will be more of these, so don't worry. Okay, I'm gonna trim this off. I'm gonna use this piece that I'm trimming off later, so just sit that to the side if you're gonna do that. And now we're gonna cut another piece. You can see if your bracelet kind of moves out of that shape again, you can very easily kind of bring it back to that, that perfect round shape. I'm gonna cut another piece of wire. Same thing, it's the 24 gauge, okay? Haven't changed any of that up. And now I wanna go the opposite direction. And sometimes it takes me a minute to figure out. <laughs> so I've turned the bangle over, by the way. I'm gonna anchor my wire again. Okay, now I'm gonna go the opposite direction. That's gonna make some little crisscrosses in our wire. Okay, now remember, I've turned the bangle over. That's why it looks like we're going in the same direction. We're really not. You see how it makes the crisscrosses? That's what we're going for. Okay, so same thing. I'm just gonna go all the way around. This, not only is it pretty, but it is helping to keep all of that sorry ribbon or whatever you're using on your bangle, okay? That's gonna, it's, it's serving two purposes. It's pretty, but it's also making sure that you don't lose your ribbon when you're wearing this. Because that can happen if you don't make sure that your ribbon is nice and secure. Now, the alternative would be to um, glue your ribbon to the base. I am just not, oh gosh, I'm just not, I just took a, junk, a chunk out of my thumb. I'm not a gluer. If you are a gluer though, you totally can. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just not, I like the wire. All right, so coming back around to where we started. Okay, so you can see where we are. It is really, really pretty. And it looks pretty even if you don't add extra beads to it. We're gonna add extra things to ours because we're extra. But um, you can leave it just like it is and it looks amazing. Okay, now gotta do a little cleanup work here. So I'm gonna trim off the tail where we started. Okay, I do have a little kink in my wire. So I'm gonna unkink that. Okay, 
So that's good to go. I'm gonna smooth that out as much as I can. If you've got your nylon jaw pliers, you can do that as well, okay? Now, here at this little bundle where we have lots of wire going around, I am going at <laughs> well, my poor thumb. It just took a whole chunk right off the top of my nail. It's so ugly, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but I am going to um, I'm going to put some beads here and bundle some wire some more, and then we're going to come down and do a little more bundles on in other places. Okay, to kind of even it up, or if you want to skip all of that, that's totally fine. So as far as the beads are concerned, I'm using some of these really beautiful little faceted rondelles that were in the bargain bead box for June. The blues ended up being almost the exact same color, so it was like. It was, it was kismet that I found this sorry ribbon to match these blue beads. I mean, they're, they really are perfect. Perfect, perfect match. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the end of my wire and I'm just going to thread on several of these. I don't know how many. I don't, I don't have a, a count, right? I'm just going to thread on maybe an inch or two of beads. And then we're going to wrap those around to make a little bundle. And we'll do a couple of these little sections just for fun. Now you don't have to use a color that's the same color as your ribbon. You don't have to use facets. You can use uh, seed beads if you want. So you can use literally anything you want to to go around your bangle bracelet. In fact, you can use big beads if you want to as well. Okay, so there are all my beads. I dropped all those down. To wrap these around, I don't want it to be a solid wrap around. That's, I kind of like to, separate mine out with some spacing of wire between them. So I'll lay a couple of beads down and try to, you know, space them out so that you can see the wires in between there. Now it just takes a minute, you know, just kind of laying them in there. If you feel like your wire is too long and it's giving you trouble, trim some of it off as well. But you can see how I'm just kind of placing them here and there along the wire, right? They're not all together. They're not evenly spaced. They very much are doing their own thing and I'm so okay with that. And before I commit to their placement, I can I can kind of move them along the wire if I want to, and I can loosen up the wire a little bit if I need to move some of them around even more. Okay, but then when you like the placement of them, go ahead and wrap again. So just kind of lock those in place. Okay, so now I have a little section of beady babies. And it's very um, free flowing, right? They're, they're kind of just doing their own thing and I'm okay with that, but they're not moving at this point. I made sure that I did wrap them tight, okay? So they're not moving along. If they're moving along and you're using particularly these little facets like that, they will break just so you know, okay? If you knock these up against something and they have wiggle room, too much wiggle room, like that one, that one might be a little, that might be danger zone bead right there. If they have too much wiggle room, they're more inclined to bust on you, okay? So just, just be aware of that. Beads are not um, indestructible, okay? Okay, so now I still have a little bit of wire here. I'm gonna work my way down the bracelet a little bit, come down, and I've come down a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start another section right here. So I'm gonna load up my wire with some more of these beads. Okay, and remember I've still got wire scraps as well and I'm gonna reach for those scraps here in just a few minutes because this piece of wire is about to run out. So we're not, we're not gonna waste any of our wire here. And part of that is why I don't have any real measurements. I gave you a measurement for the 16 gauge wire but I don't have a measurement for <clears throat> the 24 gauge wire because it's really going to kind of be up to you how much of the 24 gauge wire you want to use, um, how much of a little wire bundle you want to make. Um, but I do like to save my scraps and use those when I can. Okay. All right. So again, I've loaded up the wire with some beads 
I feel like somebody got mad because I didn't see their question and they gave me a grumpy face and they left. Does anybody know what the question was? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm really distracted today. You guys know I didn't, this video didn't start out so great, but look at where we are now. <laughs> no grumpy faces are allowed. I've, I'm having a hard enough day as it is. <laughs> All right, just kind of placing my beads. Okay, I like that. I like the way they're placed. Okay, wrap around a few times here. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim off. Yes, I have a little bit of extra wire here, but I'm going to, I'm gonna use it elsewhere. What do you guys do with your scraps, by the way? With your wire scraps? I feel like we all have an, a huge amount of wire scraps. I use mine if I can. I use them for um, components or whatever. You know, if I've got enough to make ear wires with, not with the 24, but with the 22. Uh, where I got my sorry ribbon. <coughs> so I I'm pretty sure I got mine on Etsy a long, long time ago. Um, but you can get sorry ribbon scraps um, on eBay. Sometimes I see they have huge um, lots of scraps. Some of the D-Stash sites, Kathleen would know for sure, um, there are lots of D-Stash people who get rid of sorry scraps. She sent me some really gorgeous ones. I don't know if this blue came out of the stuff she sent me or not. I think this was from an Etsy scrap. I'm not sure. I don't know for sure. Um, but yeah, there's, there are a lot of places you can find the scraps. They're not, they're not super easy to find at your local, like your box craft stores, um, unless they carry specialty stuff. Now your smaller fabric stores may have them, but your box stores, I, they normally, I've not seen sorry ribbon in like Hobby Lobby. Okay. So I'm going to do another section or two of the beads. So I'm going to use my scrap that I had. And my question still remains, what do you guys do with your wire scraps? I'm definitely interested to know. So I'm gonna come down a little bit with another piece of wire. I'm just gonna start another little bundle. Go around, make sure that wire is anchored and now I'm gonna load it up with some beads. So in the bargain bead box, the beads were red, white, and blue, but the red wasn't like, there is like a Crayola red. I'll show it to you here in just a second. We'll talk more about those beads in just a minute. Um, but the blues are dark, beautiful ocean blues, and the whites are wispy, just beautiful. And the red that's in here, there's one that's like Crayola red, but then there's another that's more of like a deep maroon color, this guy. Which I think takes it from that patriotic place to a nautical place. Just the, um, just the adjustment of the red. I know that seems like a strange little adjustment, but it does make all the difference in the world. It takes it from that one patriotic note to a definitely a nautical beachy place okay here's my last little grouping of beads okay and i may not i may not use all of these i don't know i'm just gonna kind of put those around kind of spacing them out with my fingers Whoops, I'm throwing beads all over the place. Karen wants to know what the length of your silk was when I started. So when I started, I had about three feet of sari ribbon and I was able to go around my bangle about two and um, a half times. All right, I'm gonna take these off. Those last few beads right there and then wind this around a time or two. 
Okay, now I can keep going. I could do another little section here if I wanted to. I've got enough wire, but I'm actually just gonna trim this off and we're gonna move on, okay? Because we need to talk about these beads and add a little extra fun to this. So here's what we've got. How much would you sell a bangle like this for? That's a good question. Um, once I got everything on this, I'd say probably about $20. Uh, I guess it kind of just depends on where you got your sari ribbon from, how much it was, and how much your beads were, right? But a good starting place is about $20 for sure. Um, I wouldn't undersell it because it does take a little bit of time, right? You got you to gotta be sure you're paying yourself for your time. Okay, so this is what we've got so far. And again, it looks amazing just like it is, but we're going to add extra things to it. So I'm going to show you what we're going to add to it. And then we'll talk more about the beads before we move on. So in this bargain bead box for this month, um, the, like I said, the red, white, and blue was very much the theme. It was nautical. This little guy, I cannot wait. I'm going to, I, I cannot wait at the end of the month. Bargain Bead Box usually lists what they have left over, and then they send you an email and say, okay, if you want to reorder anything that was in this month's shipment, um, now it's it's in the shop. I can't wait because I'm going to grab a few of these. I don't know why, but I'm just obsessed with this little compass. It really is a working compass, right? The quality is really, really nice. It has the rhinestones going all the way around. I just, I don't know. There's something about tiny little things that I'm obsessed with. So we're going to put it on a jump ring and we're going to hang that from here. There were some of these ship wheels. We're going to hang one of those on our bracelet. And then we're just going to make some little dangles out of some of the red beads. There were these um, head pins with the ball endings. So we're going to wire wrap two of those and one of these guys, which was also in the mix. So let me show you what else was in here and then we'll put this, the rest of this together. So I'm not gonna go through this one thing at a time, but I am gonna just kind of give you a, a little bit of an overview as to what was included in this month. So there was some lapis, look how pretty. So, so pretty. Right, um, this was that bright, bright red. And then of course the mix of the, or not the mix, but a big strand of the, this kind of darker red. Um, let's see, what else? These guys, how fun are they? I love that. Really, really pretty. Um, the white which is always appreciated. So there was this white, and then there were these that we're using. They look very similar to Z beads. I don't know what they are. I know it is some sort of agate. I don't know what they're called though. I don't have the paper with me. They do include a paper, so they, you know, so you know what everything is. I'm just, I'm going through it pretty quickly just to give you just a little quick overview. There were more beads, so there was some more of the blue. I had plenty of the blue. There were these guys, these are really pretty. I almost used these in the bracelet and then I thought, you know what, that's so expected of me. <laughs> so I thought I would change it up a little bit and not use these. I don't know that that really surprises anybody because I still managed to use facety sparkly things. Um, and then another of these, so there was a ton of stuff and then there was all of the metal. So there's always a ton of metal components. There were these, the bracelet, some bead caps, some toggles, um, there was chain, there was more of these guys. So there was a little bit of everything in, um, in this month so that you had a lot, you always get a lot to play with, right? So these guys, these head pins, this is what we're gonna use to put our beads on our bracelet. So we're just gonna do a couple of wrapped loops. We're gonna do three, two of them are already done. And then we're just gonna use some large, I'm using some 10 millimeter jump rings to attach these to our bangle and then we're gonna call it a day, okay? So just do some wrapped loops here. I'm going to drop our beads down on And now we're just going to do a wraps loop. If you're more comfortable doing um, a regular loop, go for it. We're going to do one like this. So, or one, a wrapped one on this, this bead. 
I'm going to take the wire, we're going to bend it right over the top of the chain nose pliers. That gives us the room that we need to make our wire wraps. So now I'm going to come in, where are my round nose pliers? Where'd you go? How do I lose so many things? Okay, <laughs> round nose pliers. Coming in with the round nose pliers. The wire is going between the barrels of the pliers. I'm going to take that wire up and over the top barrel of the pliers. Now, in order to take that wire all the way over to make a complete loop, I've got to take this bottom barrel and move it to the top. So we're just going to rotate and take the wire over to the other side. Okay. And now we're going to use our pliers to wire wrap in the space between the loop and the bead. So wrap around, and then you want to come in with your cutter tool and trim off the tail. And if you've got any that is sticking out, use your pliers to just tuck that in. So there's a wrap loop on that. And then we're just going to repeat that on these. So I'm not using a ton of beads on this project, but you could. You could fill up the whole surface of your bangle with beads if you wanted to. Um, it's totally up to you. I'm kind of... I'm being kind of stingy with my bargain bead box beads just because I do have another project in mind for myself. <laughs> so I was like, hmm, I think I'll save these. So um, I'm not using a ton, but I I think that it was it's enough for sure. At least for the look I was going for. Okay. All right, one more wrapped loop here. Okay, take that wire up and over. I'm not moving the, the tool, just using the ply or the wire. Now I do have to rotate those pliers, so I do have to move the tool, take the wire over to the other side. And when we switch hands, then we do our wire wrapping between our loop and the top of our bead. And we're gonna come in with our cutter tool and trim off the tail. Now, I'm just going to place my beads, some of my jump rings here, in two sections. So I've got three little sections of our beaded bundles. I'm going to put some here and then some here. So for this little section, I'm going to take a jump ring. I'm using a 10 millimeter jump ring so that's nice and big so that it can clear the entire bangle here. So I want to open it up nice and wide too. Be sure you open it up wide enough hook it to the bangle and before I close it back I'm going to thread on my little compass and then close that back make sure you get a good closure on that so nothing sneaks out on you okay and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to use one of our little ship wheels here <coughs> excuse me <coughs> Okay, and close, <clears throat> whoa, close that back, make sure, nope, <laughs> Went a little aggressive there, there we go, <laughs> got aggressive and threw it at myself, all right, so those are right there, and now we're just going to come over here and put our little beady sections over here, so I'm going to take two of the little red beads and put them on one jump ring, so two of these guys thread that on okay i'm gonna thread on our big white bead here And then I'm gonna do our last two red beads the same way. I'm gonna put them both on the same jump ring. Yeah, these are 10 millimeter jump rings. I needed them to be nice and big so they could cl clear the entire bangle. Once you start wrapping your ribbon around the bangle, it gets kind of thick. So big jump rings was definitely necessary here. Okay, and this is the last one. 
All right. So now we lay it out. You can see, and you can add more to this, right? You can do more beads. You can do more charms. You do whatever you want to to hang from this, or you don't have to hang anything from it at all if you don't want to, right? You, it doesn't have to have extra dangles. I'm just one of those people who likes a dangle, <laughs> but I also appreciate a bangle that doesn't have anything on it because they make the really, they make super cool stacks, right? You can stack them up with your other favorite bracelets. So a lot of, a lot of fun. All right, let's see. There was a question. Um... Where can we get the bargain bead box? Is there international shipping available? You know what? I'm not sure about the international shipping, but I'm pretty sure that the link is in some of the comments. Some of you all have dropped the link a couple of times. Um, let's see. It's like a bangle with bangles. <laughs> um, would it be more with the charms then? Uh, yeah, it really is going to kind of depend. I love the I love your your um, questions about pricing because pricing is one of those things that everybody struggles with. Um, yeah, it's going to depend. The more charms and the more time and you know the more value to the the charms or the beads or whatever is definitely going to increase your your overall price for sure. Um, I would still probably stick this around the twenty to twenty four dollar range. You also have to take into consideration where you live and how much things are where you live. Now, when it comes to selling online, you want to go on the higher side, but when it comes to selling in person, you want to take into consideration like the cost of living where you are and how much similar goods are going to go for. So if you live in an area where there's a huge discrepancy between $20 and $25, right? And $20 is more more like $25 where you live. Does that make any sense at all? I hope it does. Um, then you would go that route. Um, so a lot of things go into pricing items, but yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to turn you around and we shall say our goodbyes. And I'll show this to you from another direction, right? Oh, gosh. <laughs> My mama would say, go wash your face. <laughs> all right, so here's our bangle with all of its charming goodness on it. So, so fun. Get it on so I can wear it. I love a good bangle bracelet. I, I like I like noisy jewelry. That's just kind of... <laughs> I like noisy things to wear. I like the jangles, right? The jingle jangle. So, um, yeah. It's lightweight too, which is why I love fabric jewelry so much, particularly for summertime. I like lightweight stuff. And this is super lightweight and fun, and it would stack up with your other favorite bracelets and be super, super cool. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope that I have um, encouraged you or inspired you, rather, to use um, your your sorry ribbons and your fabric scraps in a new and fun way. Um, and if you've not signed up for the Bargain Bead Box, I definitely encourage you to try it out. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. I like it. I think part of the reason that I like it the most, um, or one of the top reasons why I like it, is because um, they give you a nice discount to reorder beads. And I really, really like that. I can... Um, I can make really big orders with them and feel like I'm shopping wholesale even though I don't have a wholesale license. So it's a nice feeling to kind of feel like I'm in with the in crowd. You know what I mean? Like cuz I don't have the I don't have wholesale licensing and all of that stuff, but when you shop with them you kind of feel like, you know, you have that insider shopping. So it's cool. It's cool. Um anything else? I'm sure there are other things, you guys. I'm so distracted today. I'm so sorry. Thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for being understanding. Um, thank you for giving me some strength at the beginning to get through this project. It's not, once I get started, I'm fine. It was just that those few moments in the beginning where I just wasn't sure if I was going to make it. So I appreciate it. I, I, I feel your love coming through. So um, it was, it was much appreciated. Um, let's see, tonight, well not tonight, but later this afternoon, 4 p.m. over on Hardwired, I've got a brand new project for you guys, so I will see you guys there. For everybody else, I will see you um, Thursday. Yeah, I'll see you Thursday. Tomorrow, I have to go to the dentist tomorrow. <laughs> but I will see you on Thursday with another fun project, you guys. So, be looking forward to it. I, I've got some new Beetle On products to show you guys as well. So, 
come hang out with us on Thursday. Set your reminders. You guys have a wonderful rest of the day, and I'll see you soon. Bye, guys.